Hi, welcome back to another episode of Tim Two Wheels. Today, I want to take time to toot my own horn. <laughs> no, not this kind of horn. Uh, I want to talk to you about the horn on the motorcycle. So like most stock horns on motorcycles, the one on my GS Adventure is pretty pitiful. It doesn't really honk so much as make a meep meep sound. Meep meep. So in today's environment, when you have people distracted by cell phones, listening to music, windows rolled up, air conditioner going, or the heat going, it's hard to hear the motorcycle horns inside of a car. So I wanted something that was going to be a little louder, well, a lot louder, than the OEM horns on a motorcycle. So, not surprising, I began a search for an upgrade. I know, hard to believe, but that's what I do. So. I looked at several different horns, as usual. Now, I was leaning toward going with the Sound Bomb, or more likely the Sound Bomb Mini, uh, because of the mounting options. They did have a bracket that allowed it to fit or be mounted on my bike, uh, but it still wasn't quite the same as the OEM horn as far as the space that it took up, physical mounting, uh, etc. But the biggest drawback to me was that it was going to require the use of one of my two high-powered circuits when I connected it to my uh, Hex Easy Can. So, as you may have seen in the previous video, and I'll put a link up here to where I uh, to the video where I installed uh, the Hex Easy Can, and I love the Hex Easy Can and, and what it does for me. Um, but it has two high-powered circuits and two low-powered circuits. So, if you want to run a high-powered horn like the Denali Sound Bomb, it requires that you use one of the two high-powered circuits to run that horn. And that's fine. It just means that you need to run your two, if you're going to have auxiliary lights or driving lights, the two lights need to be chained together and run off of one single circuit. So and as you may have also seen in one of my previous videos, and again, I'll put it up here in the card, where I installed the Baja Design Squadron Pro lights, uh, I mounted them right above the front turn signals. And because I had them so close to the turn signals, I wanted to take advantage of some of the cool configuration features in the Easy Can to where I could shut down the light on the side of the active turn signal. What that does is it keeps you from drowning out with the bright light your turn signal. So that's a feature that I really didn't want to give up. Uh, and so I was really struggling with what I was going to do about a horn. So one day I was in my local uh, dealer, Eurosport Asheville, picking up the lights. I was talking to Travis at the counter and explained to him my dilemma about configuring the Easy Can and the horn and the lights and all this. And he asked me had I ever considered the BMW OEM car horn as an option. And honestly, I had not even heard of that. So he told me that, that they offer a an OEM BMW horn that's actually designed to run on the 5 Series cars, I believe, that is a low pitch horn. Uh, so not only is it louder, it also has a lower tone that makes it more like an automobile and is um, carries better as far as the, the sound goes. So uh, Travis hooked me up with this horn. I took a look at it. Uh, the nice thing is, is that this horn mounts in the exact same location as the OEM motorcycle horn. It has the same type of mounting bracket, has the very same connector as the motorcycle horn, and uh, it, no modifications are required to run this. So why is that important? Well, one, it uses the exact same connector, OEM. I'm not having to cut, splice, tap in to add a horn that was never really meant to be on the bike, and it's compatible with the CAN bus system that's on the, uh, that's on the bike and doesn't cause any problems, so you don't get an error. It doesn't flag any errors or anything like that when you use it. So for me, this horn was a win-win-win situation. It checked all of my boxes for what I wanted to achieve. It was louder, uh, which would make my presence known, uh, it was CAN bus compatible. I could plug it straight in. It was a direct replacement for the OEM motorcycle horn, physically and electrically, the connection. And I could continue to use my OEM switch gear, so there was no modifications. I'll, I'll, put the, I'll put the part number in the description below. You can go through your source for BMW parts if you're looking for this horn. 
uh, to find it. There's several on the internet. Now there is a company called Vimo who makes a third party replica of this horn. Uh, and I'll put a link to that one as well. If you want to save some money, you can get this one off of Amazon. Uh, but I want to be clear, that horn that I have a link to is a third party. It is not a BMW OEM horn. I've not tested it. I don't know how loud it works, how well it works. At the time of this video, there was two reviews on it that said it did great. Uh, but, you know, buyer beware, you do what you want to do. So let's go on over to the bike and I'm going to show you how to upgrade this horn. It should be the same for any liquid cooled GS or GS Adventure. And uh, let me, I'll just show you. It's a fairly straightforward process. Okay, then when we remove this, we can come in here and as you'll see right here is your horn. Um, now there's two, really one, just this one T40 uh, bolt right here that removes it. There's a captured nut on this arm, so don't worry about a nut falling off the back side. Um, you might be able to get in here okay, but you can also remove this T25. Uh, that's right here and that holds this little air scoop. It's a support bracket for this uh, air intake here uh, And this is an air tube that just goes back to your air box uh, for the filter uh, So it may be easier just to remove that a little uh, to get it out of your way. So again using the T25. I'm just going to um, Remove this little guy here you may not have to, but I do just to make life a little easier. And as you can see, it doesn't move much, but it allows you to flex it just a little bit to get uh, so that you can get your uh, wrench in here to get to that T40. I'm using the long one again, just to give myself a little uh, extra reach there. And let's go ahead and remove that. Now the, there's still a wire, uh, the co electrical connection is on, so don't worry about it falling. Lay this over here to the side and get in here. Turn a little extra light on here, maybe you can see it better. And then we can pull this uh, bolt out of the way here. That's a fairly significant bolt to hold a horn on, but it's there. All right. Now, lastly, uh, you see this is that caged nut that's uh, that's on here. So that's why I say you don't have to worry about it falling off. And we'll transfer that one over to the to the new horn. So lastly is this uh, small electrical connection right here. Now, don't just pry and jerk and pull. There's a little tab that you can lift up. And I've found that it works best if you can use a small pick or a small flat blade screwdriver just to get under here. And then you can lift that tab and then it comes right off. All right, so this cage nut is gonna come off and go on the new horn, and that's it. That's what the OEM horn looks like. Now, our new horn uh, here in the box, uh, again, it's a BMW. Uh, there's the uh, OEM part number, and uh, I'll post it in the description below along with a couple of links, but it is 6133-8381-271. It is a BMW OEM horn. And let me open this up to show you what that looks like. And here's the uh, the new horn. Now this again is a car horn, 
So you'll notice the main difference is that the horn and body itself for the mechanism looks the same, the connector is the same. Uh, the big difference is that this car horn, instead of just having the open uh, diaphragm here for the, for the speaker, uh, has a horn or a has an actual uh, horn casing on here to amplify and direct the sound so to me it looks very similar uh, as far as the the body itself again the only difference is that you will have this piece uh, that so it makes it slightly uh, wider uh, well quite a bit wider uh, but it's not a problem it's still clear as there's nothing on the bike that's going to block this uh, the other significant difference, if you haven't noticed, is that if you look at the two horn bodies, the arms are a different orientation. So this is the black ones off the bike. Uh, we just need to loosen this, I uh, think that's a 13 millimeter nut, slightly rotate the arm over so that it has the same orientation. So it's about, I don't know, 45 degrees that it needs to come over. And we'll go ahead and do that right now. So using a 13 millimeter socket, good, I'm just going to uh, Loosen that nut slightly. It doesn't have to come all the way off because you just need to loosen it so that you can rotate uh, this arm around to the same orientation. And let's just make sure, let's just hold it up here and compare it so it looks like about right there is going to do the trick. Uh, you know, if that's not enough, once you get it on the bike, uh, you can always uh, rotate it around. So I'm just gonna snug that up there by putting the captured nut or the caged nut on. Uh, again, the horn is gonna go in in this orientation on the bike. And so we just wanna slide that back up or back on there. Uh, you just want the, the nut part to be on the backside because we're gonna be putting the bolt in in this direction. Uh, so obviously you don't want it the other way around and just line it up with uh, the hole in the bracket. So we have our plug hanging down here, all right and it will just snap in place again this is a direct replacement the same type of connector because it's still an oem uh, bmw horn heard the click so that's that's on there just make sure it's not going to come back off and then uh the bracket goes on the back side when you put this back on so here's the metal uh, frame the tab for the frame you just want to make sure the arm goes on the back side so just putting the t40 bolt on here We'll line that up and then you might have to wiggle it around just a tad get it to line up again that air intake tube is a bit in the way but it, it can be done and there it's starting to tighten up now now there is a uh, plastic housing on this back side that it does touch so if you want to kind of slightly bend that arm out just a tad you can uh, but it does fit in there so once the horn is mounted here tightened up you can come in and just Break that 13 millimeter nut loose enough to where you can play around with the rotation. So you see you have some room to wiggle. So if you want to angle this down more, the plug gives you enough room to do that. So I could leave it more in a forward position. And what that's gonna do is project that noise even more forward. And then you can come back and snug that 13 millimeter nut up. Tighten that up everything down and you are good to go come in here and put my 25 my t25 back in the air intake tube so that's tightened up just want to give you a view of what this looks like under here so there's the horn there's where it's mounted so there's the horn and how it's mounted you can see that little piece of plastic that i was talking about that it kind of butts up against but it's free and clear Sorry, I'm trying to show you some, give you some light here with my little uh, coast light here, uh, just to give you a better idea of that mounting position. All right, so now that that's on, uh, it's just a matter of putting our uh, fairing shroud back on, uh, reattaching the uh, crash bar up here, upper crash bar, and we're good to go. So now we'll take it outside and uh, let you see how this new horn sounds as compared to the old horn. Okay, so here's my setup. I have this uh, decibel meter application on my smartphone and I'm gonna be measuring this at two distances away from the bike. I have a tape measure on the ground. I'm gonna be measuring at 10 feet and again at 20 feet away from the front of the motorcycle. I have this on a tripod 
with a phone mount so that nothing is interfering with the phone causing additional noises. There is some ambient noise, but you'll clearly be able to see how it's moving as I'm talking. Uh, now at this point, uh, this is set at 36 inches, three feet off of the ground, and again, 10 feet away, and then we'll move back to 20 feet for the second part of the test. I'm going to be giving three separate short beeps, then we'll average the decibel levels of those three tries. So here we go. Okay, so let's move this setup back to 20 feet. Okay, so that was at 20 feet. So now we're gonna go replace the horn and try it again with the new horn, see how that sounds. Okay, so I have the test set up again, uh, this time with the new horn. I apologize, it is a super bright sunny day out here today, uh, so there's a lot of reflection. I'm trying to get the angle right where you can see the meter. I've got it paused right now. I can hit play, okay. Okay, so it's gonna start recording now. You can see it's reacting to my voice. So let's go ahead and honk the horn and see what happens. And let's move to 20 feet. Okay, I think I'll have to do is go in and do a comparison and I'll put them up on the screen. All right, so yesterday I was able to do the installation and uh, do the comparison test using the decibel meter app on the smartphone. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the numbers up here. So you can see the numbers are relatively close. So one thing I'm a little confused about with these numbers is that in person, the low pitch car horn is significantly louder, seems louder to my ears, much louder than the original horn that came on the GS. Now these numbers don't reflect that. Uh, so they, they seem pretty comparable from a decibel standpoint. Now, why in person the horn over here seems to be significantly louder than this one when the decibel readings don't really reflect that? Uh, I can only attribute to the fact that it's got the uh, a lower pitch uh, the sound seems to carry further. The fact that it is a low tone uh, and it resonates more. I, I, I can't really explain it. I'm not a scientist, but uh, everybody that I've been around that when I've honked this horn, they've commented, man, that's a lot louder. What did you do to that bike? Where, you know, They basically want to know how did I get the horn to be that loud and what did I do to it? To help kind of illustrate that, here are two recordings of the two different horns from the same distance. So take a listen. All right, let's play it again. Okay, so those are the two horns, uh, same distance, everything identical, mic pointing in the exact same direction. And you can hear the difference between those. Now I'll tell you, standing there in person, there's even a bigger difference that these mics don't pick up. Uh, so at any rate, I just wanted to throw the numbers up here and let you see for yourself, and you can make the decision if this is something that you wanna do. Now, in the beginning of the video, I talked about how I was leaning toward going with a Denali sound bomb. So I went back and checked the specs on that. Now the Denali claims uh, a 120 decibel um, rating. Uh, now, that's painfully loud. Um, and, and yes, so if you want a super loud ear piercing horn, uh, then you might want to consider one of the air horn options that are out there on the market. Okay, um, so the, as far as the installation goes, the, uh, it was a pretty straightforward process. Uh, in real time, if I wasn't recording and backing up and all that, uh, to replace this, the majority of the work is taking the body panels off the, off the bike 
um, and the actual horn replacement itself takes just a minute or two to swap it out. Overall, I, I still think this was very much worth the upgrade. Uh, even though the decibel numbers don't really reflect a huge difference, there is. Uh, and I'm quite happy with the upgrade. Uh, the, the, the louder horn, along with the strobing light effect of the Hex Easy Can, uh, it is a real attention getter. And we all know how important it is to, if a car starts to pull out in front of you, to be able to hit that horn, flash the lights, you got a visual clue, you got the louder horn. So whatever horn you go with, I think it's a great safety upgrade to be louder as well as more visible. We all want to stay safe out there. So before I let you go, I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank you as the viewers. Uh, I really appreciate the support. The channel is growing. I greatly appreciate all the views and the comments that I get. Uh, please leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about the video. Also, feel free to make suggestions on the types of videos that you, as the viewers of this channel, want to see. Uh, I'm here to try to make the kind of content that you want to watch. Uh, I also want to take this opportunity to thank toolvector.com for sponsoring my channel. I greatly appreciate that. Also head on over to tim2wheels.com and check out uh, the website. I'm starting to fix that up a little bit and uh, add blogs for the, the videos that I do so you can get more information, more links, as well as there's a stuff I use page which allows you to see a list of all the tools and, and equipment and things that I use here in my shop if you want to go check those out. So as always, thank you so much for watching. This is Tim Two Wheels and that's how I did it.